Here's what I will tell you. It doesn't matter the vehicle you choose. Some vehicles are going to have bigger opportunities than others. I think what matters is, number one, choose a vehicle where your income is limitless. That's very, very important. Um, number two, focus on that vehicle and become a master of that vehicle. And I think that if people really understand that, that's all I did. All I did was I, I, I picked a vehicle where my income was limitless, right? right? And then number two, I just got real, real good at it. Like I, I just I made it second nature to me. I think if people do that, they'll become successful. I think nowadays people are making the mistake that they're picking or they're working in a vehicle where their income is limited. And then on top of that, they're not getting really, really good at anything. You're listening to the Wake Up Wealthy Podcast, the only podcast that helps you turn pro in mind, body, spirit, and business. All right. What is up, Wake Up Wealthy listeners? Welcome to the Wake Up Wealthy Podcast, where we show you how to elevate your game in mind, body, spirit, and business. Today, we have a very special guest, Mr. Danny Morell from Intero Social Empire. You may know him from the Relentless event. He's built a billion-dollar real estate sales empire, and we're very excited to have him on today. Danny, how are you? I'm doing great. How about you, man? I'm doing awesome. Awesome. Just uh, excited to have this conversation. I know that we can uh, take it in a couple directions and uh, should be good, man. So, you know, for those of you, for those of the listeners on the podcast who do not know who you are already, which I'm sure they may, um, tell us a little bit about you. Who is Mr. Danny Morell? Yeah. Um, first off, I'm a dad. Uh, I'm a, uh, I guess I'm just a normal guy who had a big vision, who wanted to go out and create something special and was able to actually stay focused enough to make it happen, quite frankly. Um, I own a real estate company called Intero Southern California. We've got uh, seven offices, 400 realtors. Um, the company did $982 million in sales last year. We'll, we'll hit a billion dollars this year. Um, and I also, uh, run Empire University, which is a coaching company for real estate agents. And, uh, I founded the event Relentless, which, uh, has seen Gary Vaynerchuk speak at it, Alex Rodriguez, uh, Rob Dyrdek, and next year, Kobe Bryant. So it's going to be pretty awesome. I saw that. I saw that. Are we, uh, selling out the Staples Center? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll see. Something we have to talk about. Okay. Okay. So... The biggest question I had, I have for you, you know, to, to start this thing off is give us a little bit of the story. Like, you know, individuals see you now, uh, you know, big stages, Alex Rodriguez, Rob Deerdeck, Gerard Adams, you know, you're an incredible speaker, but where did you start out? I've heard your story personally because I've been a relentless and dug into a ton of your content, but, you know, kind of give the listeners an idea of where you started. Yeah. Um, I think it started for me back when I was 18 years old. Okay. Uh, it started in a two bedroom apartment. It started with an understanding that we were poor and I didn't want to be poor. And, um, and I, I wanted a way out. You know, I, I, I really felt like my family deserved more. And so at the time, my first goal in life was to buy my mother a house. Okay. And uh, I set a goal to do that by the time I was 21 years old. I didn't know how I was going to do it, which was very, very important for your listeners to understand. But most importantly, I just knew that I wanted to do it and I wanted to do it like, like no matter what, you know, and I think that's important for the listeners to understand because I think a lot of people in life are held back because before they want to go out and reach for a goal, they first want to make sure that they know how to make that goal happen. No one has ever created anything worth its salt knowing the exact steps to make it happen. They go first and they go out and decide what they want to happen and then they go figure it out along the way. And I think that's what happened to me. Right. Yeah, that's great. You know, that is the biggest thing that I see. You know, my audience is a lot of young guys wondering, wondering how to start. And even within my own coaching clients that I work with, I see this a ton. And, you know, it's tough for individuals early on to grasp this idea of imperfect action. And that's the number one thing that I put out there. And for me, I was lucky enough to where I was always very raw, didn't give a fuck. I was like, I'm just going to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I was very risk tolerant, understood failure, but not a lot of individuals are that way. And they get caught up in the idea of like analysis paralysis, like wanting to be perfect. Okay. And so for you, you set that goal. Did you ever struggle with that? 
wanting to have it perfect or did you just go out and crank? No, no, because I'm not, you know, my, my mental makeup, I'm not, details are not that important to me. Awesome. Awesome. And so I think that helps me because I don't necessarily have to know how it's going to happen. I'm more about just knowing what I want to happen. And then I'll go find the resources. I'll go find the mentors. I'll go find the technology to make it all take place. Like I literally just go, okay, five years from now, what do I want to happen? If that's what I want to happen. And then boom. And then I just get started taking action, you know, regardless right. of the right action, the wrong action, none of that matters to me. I just know where I want to be in five years. And it's kind of crazy. I think that's one of my strengths is that I'm not so caught up on the details where most people, they get caught up on the details and then they never do anything. Yep. That's very true. That's very true. Okay. So you're 18 years old. You had grown up poor. Um, is this in Southern California? Southern California. Well, I, I grew up in New York and then we moved to Southern California. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think that I've heard that story. You got your mom picked everything up, moved from New York, go into that a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, mom, uh, Mom and dad got a divorce and she moved myself and my two younger brothers here to Southern California. And that's really where, you know, my, my adulthood started because I was forced into becoming the man of the house, uh, which I think made me who I am. I think made me as responsible as I am today. And um, yeah, the problem was that, you know, my mom wasn't a very aggressive person. Um, okay. She wasn't a money maker. She was just a the type of person who, who you know, uh, just wanted to get by because that's all she knew how to do, quite frankly. And, um, and as a result, you know, I, I just looked around, man, and I thought to myself, you know, if we're ever going to make it out of this situation, it's going to be up to me. Like, I, I got to go make it happen. I got to go find a way to make it happen. And that's where I think my initial thinking was in terms of what I could do to impact my family financially um, in a positive way. Interesting. Interesting. So I love, you know, I love hearing the effects of um, conditioning from a childhood. So, you know, and I talk about this a lot when helping individuals find their why. Um, and if I asked you that question, like, what is the true north? How would you define that? Yeah, uh, true north is. Yeah, that's a good one. I think first it's understanding who you are as a human being. Right. I think that's first. It's. So many people are caught up in thinking it's a car or it's a house or it's a, it's, a, it's a certain amount of income per year. It's understanding who you are as a human being, number one. Understanding your strengths, understanding your weaknesses, uh, learning yourself, understanding how you think, uh, processing why you think the way you think. And then secondly, it's what do you want to accomplish on this planet now that you know all of that? I think that's what true north is. And, and for you, what is it? If you had to summarize it up, like my why, what is Danny Morrell's why? You know, it's funny you ask that, man, um, because it's changing. It's been changing a lot. Um, I, I, I got to tell you, man, no one's ever heard me talk about this, but I just recently came across a realization where so many of us younger entrepreneurs are quite honestly wasting a lot of time on social media. And we're wasting time on social media because we want to be liked. We want to be followed. We want to uh, be famous someday. And there's a lot of people that aren't on social media that are out there building big businesses that are getting wealthy. Yeah. And so, so to be quite honest with you, it's shifting for me right now. But I think it's all rooted in the desire of wanting to help other people, help them break through the way I broke through in my life financially. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I, I like to ask that question because it was so important for me. And I didn't understand up until recently that this could change. Um, I thought, you know, like your why is locked in and for a long time. So, and we've spoken a bit about my past, um, but, you know, you know, I grew up in and out with one home was an alcoholic environment, ended up becoming an alcoholic and a drug addict myself. And it was because of deep rooted insecurity and just the fear of being alone with my own thoughts, fear of success, fear of failure all of it. And my biggest thing was once I got sober and started to understand a little bit about personal development, I, I found that I didn't quite accept myself due to my past, some of the things I had been through. And for me, the longest time was focusing on self-acceptance. Like when I got up in the morning, I needed to, like I was hustling to feel that I'm enough. 
And I've reached a point in my career now where just recently I have encountered a change and it, it came from the gratification of coaching where I started to really understand whenever I worked with others' mindsets and, you know, the kind of guy that I work with is a decently successful entrepreneur, someone who's made a little bit hustling, but hasn't quite felt that pressure that comes with it. And all of the, you know, the pressure and the stress that comes along with business. Now, I'm starting to see it change. Now, also, my wife and I have a, uh, have a child that is expected tomorrow is the due date. Congratulations. So, That's awesome. Thank you. I am very, very, very excited about that. But uh, so I know that I'm in for a big change. Yeah, big change. Big change for sure. Um, okay, so let's, let's go back on your story a little bit. So you're 18 years old. You knew that you wanted more. Um, did you immediately get into real estate? Like, where'd you start? Yeah, um, I, yeah, I immediately got into real estate um, and, and, I, and I got into it kind of on accident. But here's what I will tell you. It doesn't matter the vehicle you choose. Some vehicles are going to have bigger opportunities than others. I think what matters is, number one, choose a vehicle where your income is limitless. That's very, very important. Um, number two, focus on that vehicle and become a master of that vehicle. And I think that if people really understand that, that's all I did. All I did was I, I, I picked the vehicle where my income was limitless, right? right? And then number two, I just got real, real good at it. Like I, I just I made it second nature to me. I think if people do that, they'll become successful. I think nowadays people are making the mistake that they're picking or they're working in a vehicle where their income is limited. And then on top of that, they're not getting really, really good at anything. And that's right. an error. So give me, give me a couple examples of that. Like people are choosing an avenue where their income is limited. Like what's the first thing that comes to mind for you? Well, job. Right. Right. Job. I mean, when, you know, there was a quote I read very, very early on that said, if, if, if you're not clear with what your vision is, you'll spend the rest of your life helping someone else to fulfill theirs. And, you know, quite, quite frankly, that's, that's what happens when you uh, when you have a job, and and there's some people that look that's that's what they want. They prefer that stability. They prefer that security. I just don't think your listeners, if they're listening to this show, no. inside want that. Right. They don't, they don't want that. And so then you're going to have to have this conversation with yourself, and you're going to have to say, at some point in time, I'm going to have to switch and give up the comfort of security for the promise of the vision that I have. And that's a decision everyone on this planet has to make who does anything great. Everyone that is successful has to make that decision right there. Right, right. You know, and, and I'm like you, I, I started off, you know, once I finally, I, I got, first started trying to get sober at 21 and uh, I knew very quickly that I was never going to be able to work for anyone else. So I've, I've never personally gone through that. And, you know, I encountered, I, I got some, I caught some flack whenever I was starting to grow my social media and people are like, dude, you kind of bash jobs. And I said, well, that, totally I do. You know, you can't, you have zero control over your future. Plus, you know, I'm watching entrepreneurs, you know, gain 25, 30, 40, 50, double, triple their income year over year and I'm watching someone in a job, my parents, for example, maybe make 3% more, maybe make 5% more. And it was very tough for me to grasp. Now, have you, uh, like, what is your thought on that? Because people would, people would talk to me and they would be like, dude, some people like jobs. That's fine. Like they need, they need that. Well, listen, I mean, there's all different sites, uh, sorts of personalities amongst human beings. Uh, my thought is that we need different people for, for different things. I, I, I guess, what I'm trying to say is I can guarantee you that if someone is listening to this podcast right now, mm -hmm. um, they either have awoken to the fact that, that if they stay at a job, they're not going to be able to fulfill their full, fullest potential or they're discovering that right now. That's what I'm trying to say. So look, if you need to have a job right now in this phase of your life, God bless you. Go do what you got to do and go be the best employee that you can be. Just understand that there's a price that you must pay when you are working for someone else. That's all. Totally. Totally. And that, that's what I said. I, you know, I was like, well, it, those individuals probably shouldn't be following me if they have no desire to be an entrepreneur ever, um, or, you, you know, grow or whatever it may be. Like I'm the, I'm just the wrong guy. I'm way too raw for that. And they should, they should be somewhere else. Um, so tell me this, tell me some of the struggles that you encountered. Like whenever you got into real estate, 
I mean, obviously you're a high energy guy, extremely motivated, sharp, we're probably pretty tactical, but what are some of the things that you went through? You know, you're not going to like this answer. I don't remember too many, man. I, I really don't. I'm just so forward thinking, so positive thinking. I just let go of or eliminate all negativity in my life. I don't hang on to it. I don't know. I, I, I mean, my first year in the, in the business, I was the number two agent in, in the entire office. Excellent. Why? Because I decided I was going to be number one, right? I decided I was going to be number one. I was very, very competitive. And that's what I'm trying to say, man, is that what people need to get is that you've got complete control of your outcomes. You just got to be careful with what you focus on, right? You just heard me say, I, I decided I was going to be number one. I missed it by one. Did I say, how am I going to do it? Did I say, there's people here that have been doing this for 25 years? No, I didn't, I didn't figure, I didn't worry about how. I just said to myself, that's what I want and I'm going to go get it. As a result of that, you're constantly pushing forward in life so much when you think like that, you don't have time to hold on to the negatives. You really don't. So you know what's you know what's incredible to me? You know, you said I'm not gonna like this answer. It's so it's so interesting to me though. So like this is this concept was just ingrained in your DNA. And for you, like you just knew immediately that you were going to do something and be able to do it. And that's, you know, that's astonishing to me. And like for some people may be hard to relate to. I see and I see a ton of that. I see a ton of that. Because like for me, for example. I can't relate to, I can't relate to that personally. Like that's the way I think now, but I, dude, I was, I was a bitch. Like I was scared of every single thing on the planet. And it's just, it is so interesting to me to see where that comes from. Because for you as well, you said your mom wasn't, you know, incredibly motivated financially. Like that wasn't, it wasn't a, re, a product of conditioning either. No, no, not at all. And you know, I will tell you though, the thing that drives that thing that you were talking about did come from my mom you see, because ultimately what I'm telling you is I have a lot of faith. That's ultimately what I'm saying. That's what faith is. Faith is your ability to see a future or to see something. And even though you can't see it clearly is to believing it and work towards it. And my mom had a lot of faith. My mom's faith was just rooted in God. She was a very spiritual woman. So, you know, necessarily, you know, maybe she wasn't focused too much on making money, but she was focused on being a, an incredible mother on providing a home for her Three boys by herself, by herself. She brought us over here by herself with zero job, zero anything, and just found a way to make it happen. That's faith, my man. That's faith. And I, I guess she passed that along to myself and all three of, all, all, all three of us boys because no one has – we're all independent and, and, and we're all doing quite well, quite frankly. I see. I see. So you, you were the oldest and you, you took the responsibility of kind of leaving that family. Um, do your brother, I know one of your brothers works with you, correct? Yeah. And then the other brother is a commercial lender. He does really well. Oh, gotcha. Awesome. Awesome, man. Just re real estate all around. And that's one thing that interests me about your story as well. You got into real estate at 18 or 18 or 19 and never stopped. You said, I'm going to be the best at this and it's admirable because you know and especially in today's society social media all this stuff going on you don't know what's real you don't know what's not on social media million different avenues to take and no one is really narrowing down on their skills they're not becoming experts or even practitioners of anything nope i you know it's funny i just had a conversation about this exact topic with one of my uh, partners in one of our offices and I, and I just told them, like, you know, the number one problem we're having right now is you're just not focused. You're not focused. Everyone is, is being pulled in so many different directions right now because of social media. Here's what people need to understand. Gary Vaynerchuk did what Gary Vaynerchuk did, and he got three or four million followers, and a bunch of that happened when there was no one else on social media. Nowadays, if you decided today that that's what you wanted to do, it's pretty much impossible to do. It's pretty yeah. much impossible. Unless you spend an incredible amount of money the algorithms, everything has changed. So it feels like everyone is chasing this carrot that is dangling that doesn't even exist. And as a result, if they just put all of that energy that they're putting into social media and poured it into an actual business, people can create some wealth.
Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you know, I, I learned this the hard way. I started growing my Instagram a little over a year ago and I did not understand that it was much harder to do than it was three, four, five years ago. And you know, I spent so much time learning the algorithms, learning how to hack it, uh, growth hacking my way up to a, de a decent growth. But here's the thing, man, it just became a very expensive habit and it took a ton of time away from my other businesses. You know, to be quite honest, it's probably still doing the same thing, you know? And, and I think we, it, we as entrepreneurs, we, especially now that you're about to have a little baby, you have to make that decision as well, you know? The way I'm seeing it is that social media is a tool and it's going to, it's a tool I'm going to use to help mm -hmm. build my empire. Outside of that, I don't give a damn if anybody's famous anymore. I don't care about any of that stuff because quite honestly, um, that's not going to get me paid. It's not going to get me paid. And it's not going to get me paid. It's not going to help my family. It's not going to help my children. And that's my priority. Facts. Facts. I love that. I love that because I mean, it's true. And right now, like, okay, so if you were able to give advice to an 18 to 25 year old who thinks that they want to be like a social media entrepreneur right now, it, it's, this is the yeah, sexy. I'll tell, flat out. I'll tell you flat out. Stop faking the funk. You haven't made any money yet. You haven't proven anything to the world. You ain't worth shit, to be quite honest with you. Your ego is what's driving you to be famous on social media. Go actually build something. Go actually prove that you can make money. Go actually prove that you're worth assault and then share your story with people. I think people are completely doing the opposite. I'm a, sometimes you're a part of these comment pods and I'm like, dude, you don't make money. You don't make no money. You don't make no money. You don't make no money. Like, like, am I the only one that makes money here? I'm, and I'm out. I bounce. I can't even handle it because people are just <laughs> no, people are just faking the funk. They're quite Dude, honest. It, it's so true. And you, and the thing is now that people don't understand, like when they start to, is people can sit through the bullshit. Like I don't like me, for example. I don't hop on Instagram and tell you how to run an eight figure business because guess what? I don't run an eight figure business. Right? I haven't built an eight figure business. And like I'm just like I share. And this is what people need to understand as well. Like if they do want to share content, like share the process. That's what resonates with people anyways. Like seeing an individual who's like, yeah, I've got a fucking Lamborghini and make 25 million a year. Like that's not Hold relatable. On. Hold on. There's another thing. Another thing is on top of the fact that you're not creating wealth, then you go on, you buy a liability to fake the funk even more. And it puts you even more in debt. That's called idiocy, idiocrity or stupidity or whatever the hell you want to call it. And that's what people are doing right now. Right. Right. And it is all because of this idea of attention. But what they don't understand is, I mean, we have, it's such an unknown, like we have no idea what in it changes daily. We don't know what it's going to be in five years. And you know, what's a sure thing is like investing in yourself, investing in your business, learning your, learning your skill set, and mastering it. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Build wealth through assets. And the number one asset is you. Awesome. Awesome. So let me ask you this. What is, uh, what's the five year plan right now? What's that thing that you have your mindset on? You know, um, I, yeah, it's twofold. Uh, number one, I want to go out and build a massive real estate sales coaching company because not only do I know I'm good at it, I think I'm the best in the planet at it. And, and if I go do that, I'll be able to help a lot of people, a lot of people. Okay. Second, the second thing that I want to do is I want to um, own a lot of commercial apartments, a lot of real estate. And quite honestly, that's not a five year plan. That's, that's, that's the next 20 year plan. I'm just going to focus all my energy in those two things and become so insanely wealthy, so ridiculously wealthy. That's what I'm going to do. Awesome. So uh, let me ask you this. Why multifamily? There's a ton of people who follow this who are familiar with real estate. You know, obviously I started in real estate. I love, I love real estate investing. Um, why multifamily? Um, I think it's easiest to get into. It's something that I personally understand. Um, you know, when you get larger apartment buildings, um, there's always someone that's going to be paying your rent. Uh, and then quite honestly, here in Southern California, where I'm at, it, it's, it's just in high demand right now. Right, right. I mean, it totally, it totally is because buying there right now uh i mean things are expensive yeah yeah what do you what do you think that's going to happen over the next five years from you know a national trend standpoint like do you think that we are moving more towards renting as 
as a population, like say my generation, for example? No, I don't, I don't think that. I think there will be a correction in prices mm -hmm. within the next 24 months. I and think then so I as think well. real estate will continue to do what it, what it does, which is always trend up yep. right now. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I am uh, trying to acquire as much cash as possible right now to kind of sit and wait for a correction. Uh, Cause uh, you know, preparing for it, you can come out of the other side real, real good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let me ask you this. You've obviously been in, so how long have you been in business now? In 20, real estate? 22 years, something like that. 22 years. Have you ever encountered a point, you know, and you've gone through a large real estate crash as a real estate professional um, where you questioned what you were doing? Uh, look, man, I lost everything when that happened. Tell me about that. Uh, yeah, I lost everything when that happened. Um, it was a it was a real down time for me. It was it was a very depressing time for me. I wasn't very clear. I probably did question, to be honest with you. I actually stepped away from the industry for a little bit. Um, but 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 look, any anyone that's going to be great is going to have to go through humility. And, and for me, that was a very humbling time for me. So I'm thankful to God for it because I wouldn't be who I am today without it. Okay. Tell me about, tell me, tell me about the humble experience. Oh, I was just an ass. I was just, I mean, you know, just think about it, man. Just, just wrap your brain around this. I was 27 years old and I was doing a million and a half dollars a year in income. When just seven years earlier, I was dead broke living in a two bedroom apartment in the ghetto. So I was an ass. I, I just, yeah, I was, I was a jerk. And you know, I, I, I feel like God needed to humble me a little bit and that's what happened. And so I'm grateful for it. That's why when you asked me earlier, tell me about the tough times. I don't even think of that as a tough time. I think of that as a positive learning experience and it's what I needed to go to through to become who I am today. Yeah. I love that. You know, I was just, I did an Instagram live with a buddy yesterday and I was talking about now how I see so many people like really relishing in like the shitty times. And for me, like, I've gone through, you know, an incredible amount of shit for a 25 year old usually would have, you know, I, I speak to other 25 year olds and I feel that I have a little bit more wisdom there just because of the path that I have taken, you know, getting ravaged by drugs and alcohol and being going into it totally entitled thinking I was the shit um, was a really humbling experience for me, you know, and a couple times since I started in business uh, three and a half years ago, you know, I've put a lot of money in the bank, a lot of money to me in the bank and then lost a lot of money as well. Um, it's been a learning process this entire time, but now I'm at a point where when I'm going through negative experiences or, you know, I shouldn't say neg negative because I see them as just challenges now. I, I experience gratitude for that situation in the present moment because I've been there enough to know what happens on the other side. Sure. Absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. And that, that's great. That's why, you know, you said that you didn't see that as a struggle. Like you li literally told me that you couldn't think of any, but yeah, we found we found something that other awesome. people would consider, you know, life altering. You see, I meet older individuals now. They're like, yeah, I used to be in real estate, was killing it. Then 2008 happened, shit hit the fan. And they just never get back from that. We're, you know, we're 10 years later and they're still talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's a choice. And, and again, if you think back to what I said, true north is understanding who you are as a human being. That's, that's what true north really is. So when you can get to a place where you really like, even you even look at the bad and you find positive in it, it's because you're pretty close to true north. You know, you're pretty close to really understanding that who you are as a human being is a makeup of a whole bunch of circumstances, situations, people, energies, uh, occurrences, and, and all of that stuff is going to be happening. But while you, that is happening, you have the right and the God-given ability to, to choose what you're going to make all of that mean. And I think that's what True North is. Interesting. So I, ha I, have, a question. I have a question for you, and this is just for me personally. I, I did not grow up uh, in a very wealthy family. My parents were 17 years old when they had me, and they were never together. And it was, uh, it was a really interesting experience. You know, here in the Midwest, we were middle class. You know, it, there's a high cost of living here. But... Mm -hmm. For you, that was a big drive for you. The first thing that you told me on this call was I was poor and I knew I didn't want to be poor. Now, raising your children in an environment of abundance, 
Uh, do you ever do you ever fear that for them that they're not going to have that experience? Um, I don't because I talk to them about it, right? And so we'll, we'll be driving by a development of houses, and we'll mm -hmm. see people, you know, hammering away and building the houses. And I'll talk to them about the difference between the guy hammering the house and the guy who built the land to build the houses. I talk to them about who's making the most money. I talk to them about what it takes. I, I'm very, very clear with them. There is a difference between rich and poor. And you, at some point in time in your life, are going to have to make a decision about which one you want to be. And I don't make poor negative because if they end up being poor, then it is poor. But I just tell them the realities behind the two. I should, you know, you, you see the, the house that Tata provided for you? Yeah. Do you love it? Yeah. You love the fact that you don't have to worry about anybody stealing your bike? Yeah. Do you love the fact that you're an, on over an acre? Yeah. Do you love the fact that when it's hot, you get to go swimming? Yeah. Do you love the fact that it's brand new? Yeah. Do you love the fact that I, I own the nicest home in our city? And, and I'm able to show them. Again, you go back to the social media thing. I'm able to show them because I did it. Because I, I actually accomplished it. And then I'm able to just help them to understand there's differences. And based off those differences and what they want, they're going to have to make some decisions. About it. And then the rest that's, is up to me. That's, uh, man, that, that's excellent, excellent advice. And, you know, parenting, from my opinion there, because, you know, over the last nine months, I've been like, damn, what am I going to tell this kid? I fear, I fear for, I fear for my child so much. Like I have fear that like he's going to be an alcoholic and like, you know, all these mm -hmm. negative, all of that. Look, listen, man, all of that comes from a lack of love and a lack of communication, which I'm sure you know you went through. Yes. You went through something like that. As long as there's, you know, I don't mean to be rude in any way, shape, or form. No. There's a book called The, 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 uh, um, the Four Agreements. And in yes. The Four Agreements, uh, Don Miguel Ruiz talks about the fact that we human beings are, are kind of like dogs in that mm -hmm. we are trained and we are taught how to think, how to behave, how to react at, at a very early age. It's like, it's like a pit bull. You know, yep. people who are afraid of pit bulls, I don't understand that. I've owned four pit bulls. They're the best dogs on planet Earth. Why? We give them a lot of love and we give them a lot of discipline. It's the same thing with a human being. Right. A human being, you have nothing to be afraid of, man. Unless you're going to be absent and unless you're not going to give your kid love and discipline and right. support structure, when those things are missing, they're, they're going to find it somewhere. That's all you did. That's all you did. And it doesn't make you a bad person. It, it doesn't mean anything other than what you make it mean. Like if you could make it mean a very positive thing that you were able to bounce out of that, you were able to find your way and now you became a victor instead of a victim. And so, yeah. Right. And, and I mean, it was, and I, I talk about this often. It was everything for me. There's not a lot of people out there right now who are as open about addiction as I am in their personal experience. And I share it for a reason because it is who I am. And even in my, even in my business, like that mindset of an alcoholic, that, all or nothing, just raw, I'm going to go get it. Like, dude, that's why I do well. And that's why I always persist. And I apply that in every area of my life. Like, you know, I've heard, I've heard the word moderation since as early as I can remember, since I was a child. And I, I never was able to grasp the concept of it. Um, so tell me this as well. How many, how many kids do you have? Three boys. Three boys. How long have in, you and your wife have been together? How long? 12 years. Incredible. So has there ever been, so a big thing that I talk about is the balance, you know, between mind, body, spirit, business, and taking all of those up at the, at the same pace. Um, was there ever a point, I mean, because dude, you've built a monster empire. Like you said, you believe that you're the best in the world at it. Um, was there ever a point where your, your health or your relationships or your family life was suffering when you were building the business? While I was building it, yeah, because that's part of doing something great. But even when that happened, I just, made, I just made sure that I was very clear with my communication. I was always very clear. Like, I would come home and I would tell the kids, okay, guys, you're not going to see me for two days, but then on the third day, I'm going to rest, okay? Okay, all right. And then, you know, and I'm doing this because I want to build this a house and so forth and so on. I was just very, very, I guess I was pretty good at having clear communications with them so that expectations were real and expectations were met. Awesome, awesome. So tell, tell me this, uh, a big thing that I like to ask individuals because I, routines are everything for me. I need, I need structure, I need a disciplined time block, morning routine, nightly practice. 
Walk us through your day and what that looks like. Uh, you don't want to know my day. My, my day is a little bit different. My day today, right now, you don't know, want to know my day. Um, it's, it's somewhat structured, um, but I'm at a place in my life where I've got a lot of leverage in my life. Mm -hmm. So you, you probably want to know my life back when I just got started. Yes, very, very structured. Um, I was up, you know, four o'clock in the morning at the gym by four thirty. get into the office by seven o'clock, spending three hours a day prospecting on the phones, taking a one hour break, following up with all of my leads right after lunch. I mean, it was very, very regimented today. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just a different guy in a different position. Right. Right. Do you, um, <clears throat> do you have any sort of spiritual practice, a meditation, anything that you do to really stay present? Mm. You know, I wish I was a little bit better at that. I wish I would meditate a little bit more. Um, what I do is I'm constantly listening to books. That, that's what I do. And I'm, you know, constantly just feeding my mind positivity, knowledge, so forth and so on. Yeah. Okay. So before, before we wrap things up here, why don't you tell the listeners about uh, Relentless 2019, where they can find you, and uh, how they can be a part of your mission? Yeah. Um, the event's going to be July 24th, 25th, 26th of 2019. Uh, Kobe Bryant is going to be there. I don't know if you have ever seen him anywhere at an event. So I'm proud to be literally one of the first guys to make that happen. And um, it's, you know, it's going to be, it's, it's a, a, an event geared towards real estate professionals. But one of the things that I'm proud of is that people even outside of the industry who come experience life-changing information uh, because the principles of success in one business apply to any business. So the uh, URL is relentlessevent.com, relentlessevent.com. Okay, and we will, uh, I will link all Danny's socials and a link to the Relentless event in the show description so that you guys have the opportunity to really check that out. Check that out. I personally took myself and my entire real estate team to Relentless 2018. Um, incredible experience. And like he said, it's a real estate geared event, but I, I remember telling you at that event, this is the way it should be done because we're not focusing on real estate. We're talking about the things that matter here, but you're reaching real estate professionals. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. That, that was the plan all along. Yeah. 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 Well, Danny, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate you coming on, man. And you know, we touch base every once in a while, so I'm sure I will uh, talk to you before long. Absolutely, man. And uh, congratulations on becoming a dad. Thank you very much. I should have an interesting couple of weeks ahead of me. Forget about sleep. Yeah, yeah. Well, I already, I already do not sleep much, so I'm, I'm on point. I'm about to be super dad. I'm so jacked, so jacked. There you go, man. All right, see you, buddy. Okay, see you, my man.